Hello and welcome to the channel, all you EUC lovers and hobbyists out there. We have the Bagode Master P42A here. I was thankful enough to get this from Free Motion, so big shout out to them. Much appreciated. This here is currently the best, baddest wheel available since the S22 is still being waiting on. I am going to do a quick unboxing of this, see what it comes with, since I didn't get to do that with my Hero. This, I believe, has the same suspension, 190 millimeter as the Hero, so I'm really curious how it's going to play out. Those videos will be to follow. I'm also going to switch this one over to a coil, as I did with the Hero and the S18, so I can give it a fair comparison with somebody at my weight, about 225 on the three wheels as far as how the suspension feels, what the wheel is like. Let's get into it. One day late, all of you guys were aware on the Facebook page that I was supposed to get this yesterday. I know some people feel a little left out, but hard work and working with some of these vendors pays off sometimes. I've been working with Free Motion for about a year now. The guy's awesome, making a name for himself in the community. And I'm excited that I was able to get this. Looks like one of the first things in here is the pump. Just a basic one, nothing too fancy. I really like the ones that have the release valve on them. When you connect it to the suspension, it's typically down here. I'm not sure if this guy is going to have that or not. It looks like it may, and that is nice because if you pump it up to a higher PSI like I have to for my weight, when you disconnect it, if you hear any air loss at all, you typically lose, I'd say 10 to 20% of that PSI. So being able to release it and then disconnect it helps prevent any of that loss so you have a more accurate reading. It is nice of them to provide this. I do prefer the ones with the little flip lever, but this will work. On to the main attraction. <laughs> Just kidding. The pads. This one is one of the upper pads. I do think it is awesome that Bago decided to go back to basics on this wheel. And instead of having plastic body panels that break, they're expensive to replace. Sometimes they're not always in stock. Some people have to cover it with tape, whatever. We are just solid foam here. Solid foam on the sides. It's going to be solid foam at the bottom to protect the battery. This guy here, you can see the two cutouts. These guys would be for the batteries, so that way the portion below the pedals is less likely to take any impacts or damage. And it is a nice soft foam little softer than what typically comes with like the RS or the EXN. It feels like maybe there's less material inside, so it gives it a nice squish. These parts do sit below the pedals, so it doesn't really have much in the way of a feel on it. For how you ride, this guy would be the other lower one. And we have the wheel. And of course, the other pad. This guy is the P42A version. I do really like that Bagode went with the red suspension here. Something I did notice, however, is that the linkage pieces on the Hero and the S18 are much, much thicker than here on the Master. It is nice, it's CNC'd. It looks like they're probably powder coated, but that skinny suspension linkage does concern me a little bit. It does come with the plastic mud flap. Some people have been a fan of it, some people not. I do like the way the Hero is designed. Everything's kept up in the wheel and the suspension itself above it actually stays really clean because of the way that the frame comes out as well as the mud flap in the back. The kickstand on this guy, we will test it, see what it does. The Hero is spectacular. I heard it's better than the V11. I do really like that that wheel comes with it. The air suspension on this one does have dampening. That is a huge plus for me. Wheels feel very bouncy without it. This is actually not dampening. It 
drives me bonkers. You guys keep going with that. It is rebound. Dampening is what controls the suspension travel down and the rebound is what controls it back. And these knobs actually control the rebound so it feels much less springy on the wheel. You can see it in one of their videos where they were testing on the EX20S where they turned it all the way to slow. The gentleman bounced on it. You can see the wheel sink and not return. And then he turns the knob and the wheel pops back up. That is the rebound, not the dampening. Dampening on an air shock would be how much air you decide to put in this. On the coils, which I'll be switching over to, it's a matter of how much preload you put on the coil. I'm using a 650 pound on the Hero for my weight, 225 again, I didn't mention that already. And I did have to go about halfway up the threads to feel as though I'm not bottoming out that chalk. For an average rider my weight, you'd want a 750. For anybody 180 and less, 650 is fine. The 650 is standard for a 190 millimeter shock, which comes with this, the EX20S, and the Hero. The tire on this guy oof, is the CST. I am a big fan of this tire. It makes the wheel feel very nimble. It actually feels like the goat put quite a bit of pressure in this from the factory. I would not recommend riding it without checking it. But the knobs are very rounded all the way to the side profile. And this makes carving, to me at least, very easy. It makes being able to turn on a dime extremely just, it's fun. I really enjoy it. The Hero has it. I like it. I prefer a TR1 tire, but we all know how hard those are to get. Some people like a flatter profile just because the wheel stays more balanced, especially at speeds. Some people do complain about getting locked in this channel here, feeling like it's hard to keep the wheel upright because you are balancing just on these knobs here. But I like to off-road and I really like that I could basically control the wheel how I want, when I want, without having to feel like I'm fighting a flat profile. The tail light on this guy is not the same plastic as the Hero, but inside tail light is the exact one. It does run on five volts, which is nice because I was able to add RGB lighting to my Hero off of that power source so I didn't have to have a battery pack. It's app controlled. I could do a video on that if you guys would like. Drop a comment below. The screen on this guy is also the same as the Hero. And that being said, since it is a Bagode, it will only be in metric. I don't believe that it will be able to go into Imperial because I did take mine apart on the Hero and the metric is actually built into the screen. It's not a full LCD. It's actually LED in here, independently lit. So kind of a drawback to it, but it is very bright. There's actually a tinted panel over it, so it's not too bright at night. Do appreciate that. This guy, unlike the Hero, however, you can lift the handle into the lift position, and you can lift it into the trolley position, and either one will not impact the wheel while you ride. I ride my S18 with it in the carry position just so I have something to grab onto when I step off the wheel. The Hero, you once in motion, you could pop it up to do that, but it is not necessarily designed to ride that way because once you step off and the wheel stops, the motor will shut off. But this guy has a button, you press the button, disengages the motor, press it again, it's re-engaged. The battery packs here are very long, much like the front packs on the S18. They are plastic, but they are very narrow. I rode the S20 up at Evie's. Shout out to those guys, they're awesome. And the S20, not 22, it might be a little different now. The packs are very wide and the top of the body was a little narrow and it stands kind of similar to a Sherman. I used to have one and they're a little bit wider. For so people that are taller or have a narrower stance, that wheel may be a little uncomfortable, but the pedals do ride really flat on the S18 or the S22 and S20 and they are very large pedals which is nice for people like me with a size 13 shoe but onto the headlight here I do really like the four projector look of LEDs here I heard it is not the best I know with the Bagode wheels they have updated it to where once you're in motion the lights actually get brighter when you slow down they dim same thing with your stop so 
rolling the wheel back and forth may not engage that brightness like I've seen in the Alien Rides video that was just released. So I'm curious about testing that if they do get brighter. But I do like this. I may end up upgrading this. If I do, I'll post a video about that. The foam paneling also is integrated into the top. All this is soft and squishy. Back to the whole basics of no plastic panels, less expensive to the consumer, easier to replace. Basically a flat pane to work with here to be able to put on whatever power pads you want in whatever position you want. A few of you guys may have seen my post recently. I am making completely modular pads where you have a power pad in the front that is vertically adjustable as well as horizontally adjustable for those that have thinner legs or thicker legs, as well as a jump pad portion, a brake portion, and a heel portion to keep you locked in. Those will hopefully be hitting the market here in about two, three weeks. Testers should be getting them in about a week or two. I do have a few slots left for the testers. I'm excited about this. They should be the next biggest thing. This guy does come with, I believe these are cast pedals, not the CNC pedals. And they are quite large and quite wide. So even with somebody with a size 13, they're very comfortable. These little spikes are threaded in here, so they are interchangeable. They can be replaced if you don't like the locked-in feeling of not being able to move your foot around, which for beginners, finding that foot placement is key. So having spike pedals off the bat, I would recommend removing them so you could figure out how you need to get your feet on these pedals to get riding. But that is the plus side to these. Very durable, very thick. They also have the adjustment screws for the pitch angle. Some people like to have them a little up for a little more clearance. That is nice. I typically ride really flat. I have ground down Pagoda pedals in the past to have them more flat. This wheel, once the air is in the suspension, does have more clearance than any other wheel I know of. So as far as that pitch goes, not an importance to me. But so far, so good. Very slender wheel. Very nice looking wheel. I like the back to the basics. There's a lot of CNC metal here. The kickstand itself is all one molded piece of metal. I do like that. There's little tiny rubber pads here on the bottom. It's an all around very well looking built wheel. It is very nice. And I really appreciate Freemotion getting this to me. I will be doing some range tests on it, both on and off-road, and I will be comparing it to the Hero. I know it's got 2,000 versus 1,800 on the watt hours. I've heard people are getting 40 plus miles of range on this. I've gotten up to 50 on the Hero, but speed does play a big role. I believe the only thing left in the box here would be the charger. It is just a standard charger. There's no LCD display on this. I believe it is just three amps. It might be standard three prong, four pin, similar to what the RS, the EXN, and the Hero have, although this is the 134 volts. So if you do have a fast charger for another wheel, it will not work for this wheel. Please don't accidentally mix up the chargers if you have those other wheels in your arsenal. All in all, I think that this is going to be a very great wheel. I'm excited to test 134 volts. When I rode the S20, it was very smooth and compared to the Hero. It was very, very quiet. Like sometimes you get a lot of motor hum or kind of a whine, and that S20 was just quiet. I and mean, you could sneak up on people with that wheel. And I think the 100 volt to the 136 or whatever the S20, S22 has may have been that difference. I know I've had two RSTs in the past and they do a lot of grunting and the torque seems to kick in at a Well, welcome back everybody. Seems my camera battery died on me. Few notes on this guy. I was talking about how the RST has kind of some grunting at low speeds and doesn't seem like it has the torque until you get up to I would say around five or six miles an hour. An hour. The Hero actually does not have that problem. When I was off-roading it, it seemed like the power was there all the time, just not as smooth as the S20 slash 22. 
I'm hoping with the higher voltage of this and the higher wattage motor that it is a lot smoother and doesn't have that grunting as well as is done away with the pedal dipping that the RS had. The Hero doesn't have it, so I'm hoping this doesn't have it. A few quick notes on it. The battery packs here were completely covered in all of this plastic. Chance mentioned that, and you do actually have to take these battery packs off in order to get all that plastic off because you cannot get to the back sides here. There is two bolts up top, two bolts on the bottom. Super easy. You have enough slack with the wire to kind of get it up, peel all that plastic off and get them back in place. Almost as if these things are going to be modular and you can get larger packs. That would be awesome. So go if you're listening. More range, bigger packs. There's even bolt holes up here for larger packs. Might be because it's the same chassis as the EX20S. I'm not really sure. The other thing I noticed too was the little rubber pads for the kickstand were screwed in down here. And once the suspension is lifted up with the height of the wheel, when you tilt it back, it does not actually rest on this part. It rests on this flat back part. So you have to move those from the bottom to the back. This does need a little bit of tightening. There is not slop here in the suspension once there's air in it. However, the bushings are not properly sized, which means this shock is not perfectly centered which with this thin linkage and bushings not being proper size, it does concern me a little bit about angular stress on either the bolt, the actual suspension linkage itself, or the strut. The top part is also completely foam. If you've seen my videos, I did foam the top of my Hero to make it easier sitting riding nice and comfortable, so I do appreciate that this is foam. <clears throat> that is about all of the updates I have. More videos will be coming soon. I will have this out tomorrow and then a few reviews probably coming from the weekend and then forward about how I like this wheel, what I personally think about it as far as on-road riding, off-road riding, etc. Thank you for watching the video. Hope you guys like, subscribe, and comment. You have a wonderful evening. You